few announcements in your bulletins, if you were able to get one. Do you have any bulletins left over this morning? Does anybody need a bulletin? Raise your hand. Anybody get in without a bulletin? Over to your left, Jerry, also, or Jimmy, Tina needs one. Anybody else need a bulletin this morning? Well, you've got a couple of inserts in there. One of them is, uh, is our Memorial Day insert, and that's in uh, reference to the flags that you see flying out in front of the building uh, along the road, uh, roadside out there. And those are all the names uh, that are on the plaques out there in front of those flags. And so that just kind of lets you know uh, uh, who they are out there in honor or memory of. And if you have a veteran that you'd like to honor in that way, the forms are out on the table in the foyer. And uh, you can you can fill those out and uh, get those turned into D. And she'll she'll take care of that. And then the other one is on our graduates. And so uh, we'll be honoring our graduates and recognizing their accomplishments here in just a moment. But that'll kind of let you have something to uh, to go by. As far as announcements, uh, one that's not on your bulletin, but you need to pencil it in there on the front is June the 12th. We're having a baptismal service at 6 p.m. And so. Uh, if you've got questions about baptism or if you uh, have been saved and need to be baptized, you can see me uh, after the service and we'll get things lined up for that. But that's June the 12th at 6 o'clock. Then you see the other things. We've got uh, Father's Day and Men's Day coming up June the 19th. And then Vacation Bible School, June 20th through the 24th. Got the camp meeting on there for you to be in prayer for that. That's in September. Then on the inside, down at the bottom, it says no summer outreach uh, signs or saturate USA this Monday night. So tomorrow night we will not be uh, uh, going out with the signs or the uh, saturate USA bags. Uh, we'll get back at that, uh, Lord willing, we live the next week. And then one more that I want to call your attention to is right there in the, the middle part down at the bottom is food pantry needs. You can see some of the needs that we have right there for our pantry. If you can uh, pick up some of those items while you're at the store and bring those in. We would appreciate it very much. Anything else need to be announced this morning? All right. Well, let's worship the Lord with our giving. If our ushers will come. All right. Brother Jamie, would you pray for the offering? Lord, we're thankful for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to give. Lord, I pray you bless this offering. Very heavy weight, thank you. Lord, just love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
Travis and Starsha Baines. She is a graduate of Randolph Community College with an associate's degree, and her future plans are to go into radiology. <laughs> 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 what are you going to do? Radiography. Yes, I've had trouble with that word all day. Radiography. Anna Brookbank. And next we have, she's not here, but we have Emma, Emily Grace Hagens. She, her parents are Jimmy and Dolores Hagens. She is a graduate of Randolph Community College with an associate's in applied science early childhood education. Her honors and awards are academic merit list, yeah. and her future plans are to attend Western Carolina University for bachelors in birth to kindergarten. Can you see that last picture? That's the way Italy looks at me nine out of ten times. <laughs> Those are our two college graduates. Yes. Next are our high school graduates. First we have Hannah Marie Dove. Yes. Hannah's parents are Bobby and Julie Cook. She is graduating, a graduate of Randleman High School yes. and a member of the National Technical Honor Society and the Beta Club. Her future plans are to attend Randolph Community College for nursing with plans to transfer to UNCG to complete her BSN in nursing. <laughs> Next we have Addison. She is a graduate of Trinity High School and a member of the National Honor Society. Her future plans are to attend Davidson County College in the fall. <laughs> Next we have Ramsey Kennedy. Her future plans for right now are to work and save money. <laughs> Next we have Philip Nathaniel Griffin. <laughs> Philip's parents are Anthony and Tina Griffin. He is a graduate of Wesleyan Christian Academy. His honors and awards are most improved percussion, and his future plans are to attend Forsyth Community College to study plumbing, construction, and welding. And next we have Noah Johnson. Noah's parents are April Gwynn and Jay Johnson. He is a graduate of Trinity High School with honors and awards are the Bronze Award for the Work Keys Achievement Test. He was an early graduate and has been training full time to be an electrician since January. He is hoping to have his electrical license in two years and his future plans are to be an electrician. <laughs>
Uh, Father, you know what their needs are. They, you know their physical needs, their financial needs, but most importantly, you know their spiritual needs. And so, God, we pray that you meet all of those needs according to your riches and uh, through Christ Jesus. And, and, Father, we'll thank you and praise you for what you do in their life. We look forward to what you're going to do with them. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My wife's going to minister in song.
And that's what Jesus Christ suffered for each one of us on the cross. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's what happens when we die in our sins. We are separated from God in a place that the Bible refers to as a lake that burns with fire and brimstone. A place where there is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. The Bible says it is a place where the worm dieth not and their thirst is not quenched. That's what Jesus suffered for every one of us. And friend, you don't have to go into a place called hell. You don't have to go into that horrible place. You don't have to be separated from God for all eternity because Jesus took your place. He took my place. And the Bible says that if we believe if we will believe in our heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and we will confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, in other words, surrender our life to the Lordship of Christ, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from what Jesus suffered for every one of us. Saved from that awful place called hell. Nobody in their right mind today would want to be separated from God. Nobody in their right mind would want to spend eternity in hell. It's not a place to party. It's not a place to uh, have a good time with your friends. It is a place, the Bible says, of agony. It is a place where you'll cry out for all eternity for just one drop of water. Amen. Brother Mike Brooks in Sunday school today talked about a, an active volcano. And down in Honduras, he had gone to a place called the Ring of Fire where there's several volcanoes. And he says on the way up that volcano, there's signs that tell you that you cannot stay for longer than 20 minutes at the mouth of that volcano. And he said when you get out up there, he said you immediately, your, your eyes start to burn. You begin to have shortness of breath. You can't hardly breathe from the fumes of that volcano. Folks, let me tell you something. That's just a hint of what hell will be like. Amen. And it will be that way for all eternity. You need to be thankful today if you're saved that Jesus Christ took your place on that cross. Amen. 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 And friend, if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you need to be thankful that He didn't just die for the sins of the saved. He died for the sins of the world. Amen. And He'll save you if you'll call upon Him. Amen? Amen. Open your Bibles, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'd like to ask all who can and will to stand as we honor the reading of God's Word this morning. Thankful for these graduates. Just uh, look forward to what God's going to do in their life. And I want to encourage you this morning to surrender your life to Christ. You say, well, I'm saved. I, that's good. Hallelujah. But surrender your life to Jesus. Let Him be the guide and the director of your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11, everybody there? Amen. Let's start reading verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin, pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians assayed to do were drowned. Let's pray. Father, we come once again before the throne of grace. And Father, just blessed to be in your house today and God to be able to have a time to remember those that have fallen and protecting the, the freedoms of this nation. God, again, we pray for those families and pray that you help us to honor their sacrifice. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our graduates today and I just pray, Lord, that you just speak to them. I know this is a special time. There's family and friends here uh, as we recognize our graduates. But, Father, right now, help us just to calm things down a little bit. Help us just to lay those things aside and just get focused in on Jesus. Get focused in on your word. And, God, I pray for the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts. And, God, whatever the needs are here today, I pray that you meet those needs. Save souls, strengthen the church, change our lives. 
Father, we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In the early service, I was talking about uh, why we come to church. And sometimes we come to church just out of habit. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. We ought to be in the habit of coming to church. Say amen. 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 The Bible tells us that we should be. We ought to be in the habit of coming to church. Hebrews 10.25 says that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. That word manner means habit. Some people are in the habit of coming to church. Some people are in the habit of not coming. Amen. So we ought, to, we ought to have that habit of coming to church. But why do we come here? What, what draws us here? What brings us to church? Is it the habit that brings us here? Or do we have some expectations that bring us here? Do we anticipate that something's going to happen when we're in church? Here a couple of weeks ago, we had... Ralph Sexton with us. Evangelist Ralph Sexton. And I'm going to tell you what, it was standing room only in here, wasn't it, Jamie? Jamie worked himself to death trying to get chairs out here for everybody. And had a lot of men helping him out. But Donna, our choir director, asked me, she said, wonder why all these people don't come on a regular Sunday? And I believe the reason they don't come, a lot of them, is because they don't anticipate anything happening. They don't have any expectation of anything happening. Oh, it's just Sunday. Yeah, we'll go to church. It's our habit. But man, I'm going to tell you what, there was a lot of people that were here that, those Sundays that are not here today. We ought to come to church with expectations. Amen. We ought to come into the house of God anticipating God to do something. Amen. Amen. I mean... The prophet said that he went down to the potter's house and he saw the potter doing a work on the wheel. That's what we ought to have expectations of when we come into the house of God is that God's going to do a work. Amen. 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 And not a work on somebody else, not a work on the guy across the aisle from us, but a work on me. Amen. And man, wouldn't it be great to go out of here Knowing that God's hand had been upon you today. Yeah. Knowing that God had touched your life. Knowing that you heard from Him. Amen. 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 It's not got a thing to do whether it's Ralph Sexton or Steve McSwain or Jamie Stevenson or Steve Jack. It doesn't have a thing to do with who's up here. It has everything to do with who's in here. Amen. This is the Word from God. And anytime it goes forth, it has the potential to accomplish something in our lives. If we'll surrender ourselves to that. Yeah. Amen? Alright, I'm, I'm done with all that. Now, I want to get to the message. I want to share a message with you this morning on passing with flying colors. Passing with flying colors. Now, I know some of you older folks in here, you understand that phrase. You've heard that phrase before, passing with flying colors. But some of our younger folks may not be familiar with that. I've already seen some of them looking over there at their parents or grandparents saying, what in the world does that mean, passing with flying colors? Let me give you what, just kind of a history of that phrase. It means to pass with distinction. It means to pass with uh, uh, excellence. But what it is a, where that term came from and was, was coined was when our naval ships would come back to port after battle. And the people would go down to the docks to see the ships come in. And as the ships would go by, the people would say they're passing with flying colors. And what that flying colors was, well, it was the flags that were flying. And those flags were flags of victory. They had gone to battle and they had come back victorious. And as they would pass by, the ships would pass by, those on the dock would see the flags flying and they said, boy, they're passing by with flying colors. Amen. It means to pass by in victory. Well, I want to share this morning about how to pass through this life with flying colors. Amen? Amen. How to pass through this life with victory. I'm going to tell you something. I love victory. Amen. I hate losing. Yeah. Ain't something wrong with you if you enjoy losing. Amen. I mean, I like victory.
history. And I want to tell you something. Ever since the day that I got saved, and especially, I don't remember exactly how long it was after I got saved, but I came across 1 Corinthians 15, 57 in the Scriptures. Now, prior to that, uh, that Sunday night after I got saved, you know I heard victory in Jesus for the first time. And that's been my favorite hymn ever since that, that day that I got saved, victory in Jesus. But I came across a verse of Scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm sure it was early on because it was probably while we were going through basic Bible studies with our pastor, me and my wife were going through basic Bible studies with our pastor and his wife. But in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, it says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Victory. Now I'm going to tell you something. Random ones play it in the state playoffs. Isn't that right? They're getting ready to start up the state playoffs for the finals, right? The championship. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. You let them win that first game. I think, was it best of three? Yeah. You let them win the first game. You ain't going to sit there like you're sitting here. <laughs> Old Larry Ruth back there all stoic with his arms folded like that right there. I've seen him watch his boys play ball. <laughs> he didn't sit there with his arm folded, his hand under his armpits. No, that's right, you did not. Hey, I, you know how we are when our children win? Oh, at a ball game. A ball game. What is that going to matter a thousand years from now? Hey, man. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're talking about a victory that will matter a thousand years from now, will matter a million years from now, will matter for all eternity. Amen. 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 I like victory. And I want to go through this life victorious. I'm not talking about winning softball games or golf matches or anything like that. I'm talking about I want to go through this life victorious for the glory of God. Amen. That's what I want to share with you from the life of Moses. You'll notice there it says in verse 29 that we read, it says uh, through uh, verse 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Now I don't know if Moses and the children of Israel, when they passed through the Red Sea, they passed through with flags flying. The Bible will not tell us that they did anything like that. They didn't pass through flying their colors, but they, pa they passed through victoriously. They passed through on dry ground. Y'all know the story, amen? God parted the waters. They walked through on dry ground. They passed through victoriously. And the reason I say that is because Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world at that time, with the most powerful army in the world at that time, he tried to do the same thing, and the Bible says they were drowned. Amen. Moses, by faith, passed through the Red Sea victoriously. You and I, by faith, will pass through this life. Victorious. We can pass through by faith with flying colors. But there's some things that we need to take note of about Moses' life. Look at verse 23. By faith, Moses, well, verse 24, I'm sorry. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Let me give you the first thing. If we're going to pass through this life with flying colors, we've got to refuse some things. That went over. Worse here than it did in the early service. We don't want to refuse anything. We want it all. Now some of you are sitting there trying to be real religious this morning and all that kind of stuff, but you want it all. And you know why I say that? Because the flesh is never satisfied. If the flesh was ever satisfied, Apple would be out of business. We'd all still have flip phones. We'd all, we'd all still have pagers. Some of you don't think, what, what is that? What is a pager? Some of us would still be using pay phones if the flesh were ever satisfied. I was telling them in the early service, we were, we were down in Florida. I think it was while we were down in Florida. I know it was, we was at a hotel, so it must have been down in Florida. Hadn't been in a hotel recently, but until then. But I was downstairs just kind of scoping out the hotel and seeing where the pool was and seeing what all... Everything. And I come across this fellow, Brother Bobby, and he was standing there with his iPhone taking a picture. <clears throat> and I looked to see what he was taking a picture of, and he was taking a picture of two pay phones on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and he saw me looking at him, and he said, man, 
I'm going to send this and he called somebody's name. He said, they ain't going to believe this. <laughs> we got to refuse some things if we're going to pass through this life with flying colors. Amen. We've got to refuse everything that the world throws at us. I'm going to tell you right now, the world will load us down if we don't refuse. Amen. And you know, the Bible says, and it's also in Hebrews chapter 12, it says that, that we need to lay aside the weights and the sin that so easily beset us. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, if we don't refuse some things, we'll come, become so weighed down with the things of this world. We'll become so weighed down with debt. We'll become so weighed down with stress. We'll become so weighed down with worry that we, there's absolutely no way we will be able to pass through this life victoriously flying uh, the, the colors. Amen. Amen. Don't, we just don't want to refuse. We want it all. We want it all for ourselves. We want it all for our children. Y'all mad or just asleep? What is it? We've already honored the graduates. We should have saved that till the end. We've honored the graduates and you're ready to go. Listen, folks. Jesus Christ died so that we could walk through this world victoriously. He rose again so that we could walk through this world victoriously. But we're going to have to refuse everything that the world throws at us. Amen? I mean, you think about where Samson would be if he refused Delilah. Think about that. Think, think, about, think about where Judas would have been if he re, would have refused the 30 pieces of silver. Amen. Think about where Demas would have been if he would have loved Christ more than he loved the world. Think about where Adam and Eve would have been if they would have been satisfied with every tree of the garden save one. Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you something. We need to refuse some things. We're going to pass through this life victoriously. Go on with me. Look, look at verse 20, uh, 25. Speaking of Moses, it says he was choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. There's got to be some refusing, but there's also got to be some choosing. We got to choose. What did Joshua tell the nation of Israel as he stood before him? He said, listen. You need to choose this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. There's some things that we've got to choose. We've got to refuse the bad, and we've got to choose the good. We've got to choose the right. We've got to choose the way of the... I mean, we've got to refuse the way of the world and choose the way of God. Amen. Amen. Go over to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Jimmy, go back there and check that... Eric, see if it's on. I'm about to burn up. Amen. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7. Look at two verses. You're going to be very familiar with them. <coughs> Matthew chapter 7. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not there, say amen. amen. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Is it on, Jimmy? Yeah, I'll put it down. Hallelujah. Turn it on down there. Get Larry out of the way. He, he's going to help us up like that. All right. Matthew chapter 7. Now listen. We've got to refuse some things and we've got to choose some things. Verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Folks, let me tell you something. We've got to choose the right path. We've got to choose the right way. And it's not the broad way. It's not the easy way. Amen? It's the straight and the narrow way. I, I, I think I've got on my notes here. Yeah, I've got on my notes here. I know I'm talking to some fairly intelligent people this morning. Amen. That'll sink in in a minute and I'll get some more amens. I know I'm speaking to some fairly intelligent people this morning, and every one of us, especially Christians, have the ability to choose the right thing. Amen. Don't we? Amen. We have the ability to choose the right thing, especially as Christians with the Holy Spirit in us. We have that ability. But we don't. We just don't make the right choices. 
And the reason being is because of that, that battle between the spirit and the, and the flesh. And so oftentimes we, we make the choice to satisfy the flesh and deny the spirit or grieve the spirit of God. Listen, if we're going to live uh, through this life, if we're going to go through this life uh, with flying colors, we're going to have to choose the right path. We're going to have to choose the right way. Amen? Amen. We're going to have to let some of the things of this world go by. We're going to have to hold on to Jesus. Chapter 11 of our text this morning, chapter 11 of Hebrews in verse 26, speaking of Moses still, it says, He is esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Now, esteeming. I don't, I don't, I, I got, like I say, I'm talking to some intelligent people. We got people that's graduating, people getting ready to go off to college. I mean, Anna, Anna Baines is going off to do something that my wife can't even pronounce. So, we got some very intelligent people here. Penny last night, she said, what is that word? I may not say it right either. Radiography? Ooh. Radiography? She said, I just can't, I just can't get it out. I said, what do you what do you say? She said, radiography. <laughs> I said, you probably would just cross that out and not say that. <laughs> We're up here honoring graduates and you can't even read. They went. <laughs> but esteeming. I gotta tell you, I I I think I knew what that word meant, but I don't want to share something with you that's not accurate, something that's not right. Especially when you're talking about the Word of God. So I looked that word up. And the Greek word, which I cannot pronounce, that is translated esteem, carries with it the meaning of leadership. Carries with it the meaning of influence. And you read that and it says that Moses was esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect under the recompense of the reward. Now y'all know exactly, you know, you, you know about God calling Moses and telling him to go and get my people out, let my, set my people free, let my people go. You know all about that. And you know that at that point Moses said, oh, you got the wrong guy. I'm not eloquent in speech. I stutter. I can't talk well and, and things like that. He didn't see himself as a leader and I would imagine that a lot of people that I'm preaching to this morning do not see yourself as a leader either. Amen. And by yourself you're not. Moses by himself was not a leader. But God said, I'm going to go with you. And you go down there, and when they say, who are you, who, who sent you, you tell them, I am sent you. Amen. Amen. In other words, God, I'm going with God, and so therefore, I'm a leader. Moses went down to Egypt to influence the nation of Israel to come out. Egypt is a type of the world. He went down to influence them to come out, to impact them to come out. Let me tell you something. Every one of us here today that know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we need to take on the role of leadership. We need to have in our hearts and in our minds that we're going to impact this world for Christ. Amen. It says that Moses esteemed the reproaches of Christ greater riches than that in Egypt because he had respect for the recompense of the reward. He was going down there to influence them to come out because he knew where they were going. He knew the reward that lay ahead of them. A land that flowed with milk and honey. The promised land. Let me ask you something here this morning. As Christians, do you know where you're going? Do you know where you're headed? You're headed for a place that has a whole lot more riches than this world can afford. I'll tell you that right now. And we are to go and impact this world and tell them they need to come out. They need to come to Jesus Christ. We need to impact them and influence them to be, to, to be saved and to be born again. Because we know where they're headed. There has to be some refusing. There has to be some choosing. There has to be esteeming. Look at the next verse. Let us draw near with a true heart. Oh, I'm in the wrong chapter there. Sorry about that. 
By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Guess what there has to be now? There has to be some forsaking. That word forsaking means to abandon. We have to abandon this world. You say, preacher, you keep talking about the world. Don't, don't get upset. I'm not talking about the people of this world. We're to influence them. We're to impact them. We're to try to get them to heaven. But what I'm talking about abandoning or, or forsaking is the ways of this world. The ways of this world. You know what the ways of this world uh, are? It, it, it all falls under the umbrella of liberalism. I'm not trying to get political. I told him in the early service, Jamie, and I complimented you on, on what you said uh, Sunday. I, I, I talking about iPhones. I was trying to listen to Jamie's message from Sunday on Monday coming back from Florida. And I just about threw my phone out the window. I'd hear him say four words and then that little wheel would come on my phone. And we'd go four or five miles up the road and he'd start talking again. He'd go four or five words and he'd start going again. But I heard him, this is what I heard Jamie say. Jamie said we need to get rid of Republicans and Democrats because it's not about Republicans and it's not about Democrats. It's about right and wrong. Amen. 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 Listen, we, the ways of the world fall under that, that umbrella of liberalism. And you know what that means? That means that they try to get you to tolerate everything. They try to get you to accept everything. And we can't do that. We have to forsake that. And, and I'm not judging, I'm not pointing fingers. Let me tell you this, God tolerates me. And He tolerates you. And He accepts me in Christ, even though ever since the day that I got saved, I have still sinned against Him. But you know what? He doesn't tolerate my sin, and He doesn't accept my sin. And the way of the world is you tolerate sin, you accept sin, you rejoice in those that do it. That's the way of the world. And young people, listen to me. Old folks too. But you young folks, you're getting ready to go out. Those that are graduating, y'all are getting ready to go out into a new phase of your life. You're getting ready to go out into a new world there for you. You're getting ready to go off to college or you're getting ready to go to work in, a, in, in public work. And I'm going to tell you something right now. The world is going to come against you. The world is going to attack your faith on every hand. And you've got to make sure that you turn your back on that and keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. That's the only way to go through this life victoriously. The only way to pass through this life with flying colors. So there's got to be a forsaking. But it goes on to say in that same verse, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. There's got to be some enduring. It ain't easy. <coughs> you hear me? Amen. Some of you older folks in here, you've been walking with the Lord a while, you ought to say amen real loud because it ain't easy. If it was easy, Paul would have never said he fought a good fight. He would have never said, he would have never said that he finished the course. He would have never said that he kept the faith if it had been easy. But I'm going to tell you something right now. It's going to be a fight every step of the way until we see Jesus. There is spiritual warfare. There are spiritual enemies. There is the world and coming against us. There's the flesh and all the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It is a fight. It is a fight. It is a race. And it's a long race. It's as long as that thing we used to go to when we were doing fundraising, that Carolina 600, that was the longest race in the world. That NASCAR race. April. Oh, mercy. That thing went on for days. And then it would start raining while we were down there. And it postponed it. We'd be there at midnight. Let me tell you something. We're in a race like that and we have to keep running. We have to keep the faith. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the old devil is throwing his fiery darts at our faith. Amen. He's throwing his fiery darts at your faith. You're living in a world that wants to promote uh, evolution and saying that you, it came, all this came from a big bang and you came from monkeys and life isn't worth the, human life isn't worth anything. Don't you let that happen. You stand, you keep the faith going to pass through this life victoriously, if you're going to pass through with flying colors, you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to endure. And it's going to be tough. Look at verse 28. 
Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest that he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. There's got to be some keeping. Refusing, choosing, steaming, forsaking, enduring. There's got to be some keeping. You know what this is talking about here? This is talking about keeping a clear testimony. It's a clear testimony. What, it said, what did it say that he did by faith? It says that he kept the Passover. That's talking about the Lamb of God. They sacrificed the Lamb of God. Isn't that right? And the sprinkling of blood. The blood on the doorposts. Some of you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know, go over in the book of Exodus and read about it. But you know what this is talking about? It's talking about having a clear testimony. I'm saved. I'm born again. And it's not because I'm a preacher. It's not because I go to church. It's not because I live right or try to do good. You know what? It's because of the Lamb of God and His precious blood. Amen. That's my testimony. I, I, and I, listen, I'm bragging on Jesus right now. I, you can ask anybody in here. You can ask anybody that knows me for the last 33 years since I got saved. Ask them. Ask them if they think I'm saved. Go ahead. I ain't scared. I ain't scared a bit. Because I'll tell you what, for the last 33 years, by the grace of God, I've tried my best to walk with Jesus. I've tried to endure. I've tried to refuse. I've tried to choose the right way. So go ahead and ask them. Now let me turn the table on you. How about you? Let me go out and ask your buddies. Let me go out and ask your wife or your husband. Let me go out and ask your children. Do you have a clear testimony? Well, they say, oh yeah, I know he's saved. I know he's born again. Oh yeah, there's no doubt she's saved. you got to keep a clear testimony if you want to live victorious. Right. you got to keep a clear testimony if you want to pass through this life with flying colors. Amen. Clear testimony. Man, me and Jamie Bowe, I know all these, these preachers around here, man, we've, we've stood over those caskets, haven't we, Jamie? You look out at those families and they have absolutely no hope in their face. No hope in their eyes. You say, hey, well, tell me about this man right here. Was he saved? Tell me about this one. Was he saved? Well, I think so. Maybe so. I know he, I know he used to go to church when he was little. That's not a clear testimony. You need to make sure that you keep a clear testimony and that it is all about the Lamb of God and His precious blood. Amen. Amen. So, if you're going to pass through this life with flying colors, you've got to refuse some things. You've got to choose some things. You've got to forsake some things. You've got to take a leadership role. That's why Christ has you here, is to take a leadership role and impact this world for Christ. You've got to keep going. You can't give up. It'll be worth it after all. Amen. Amen. Let me, let, me, let me close it up with this right. Oh, y'all going to get out of here early today, man. Let me close it up with this. Look back over there at the very first part we started at, verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. There's a couple things here now. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. That by faith there is not Moses' faith, it's his parents' faith. By faith his parents hid him. Amen? If you're not familiar with that account, the, the, the Pharaoh in Egypt had gotten intimidated by the number of Hebrews there in Egypt. Man, they were having babies right and left. And he said, man, if we don't do something about this, they might rise up from inside of us and overtake us. And so the plan was to kill all the male babies. But by faith, Moses' parents hid him. It said because they saw that he was a proper child. In between services, I thought, I need to find out what that proper child's all about. You know what proper means? Purdy. They saw that he was a pretty baby. And I got to think about that. Every, every parent thinks their baby's pretty. I've seen some ugly babies. Uh, ugly babies. And the mama and the daddy going, hey, isn't he something? Would you want to take a picture? Isn't he beautiful? Isn't she pretty? You just, you just have to see him. 
<laughs> yeah, buddy. She's pretty. Oh, yeah. You know what? Moses' parents did what any parent should do. Amen. Come on. They protected their child. I hate it, but we're living in a day when Paul said we'll be without natural affection. <clears throat> we're living in a day when parents don't protect their children. Now look, I, see, you say, well, I'll protect my child. I'm not talking about that kind of protection. I'm talking about their soul. Their soul. And we're living in a day when parents don't protect the souls of their children. We just turn them over to anything. We turn them over to the TV. We turn them over to the internet. We turn them over to sports. We turn them over to whatever their buddies are doing, whatever their girlfriends are doing. And see, we, all of a sudden, we got to a time where parents want to be the buddies and not the parents. You know, it says that they hid him not fearing the king's commandment. We got a bunch of chicken parents today. You're afraid to do what's right. Because little Johnny or little Susie will get mad at you. Yeah. There's way too many parents today that are parented by fear. And they're not protecting. Not protecting the souls of their children. By faith, you need to do what's right. You adults. Your parents, your grandparents. It's not easy raising children today. Man, there's all kind of temptations out there. There's everything out there that's trying to draw them away from you and more importantly, trying to draw them away from Christ. And you just have to draw a line in the sand. You have to put your foot down. You have to drive in the stake. And say, I'm sorry, you might get mad at me, you might not speak for me to me for a week or a month or ten or whatever, but I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to do all I can to protect your soul. I don't want you to die and go to hell. Amen. I don't care. I, hey, look, I, I don't care that you don't get to ride, wear whatever your buddies are wearing or whatever your girlfriends are wearing. I don't care if you don't get to listen to what they're listening to or watch what they're watching. I don't care because I know that what goes into your heart will come out eventually and I want good things for you and I'm going to drive it down and say, I'm sorry, you can't do that. I want to hide you in Christ. I want to, I want to cover you over with the Word of God because I want you to be in heaven. I want you to be able to pass through this life with flying colors. I want you to be able to live victoriously in Christ. This passing through life of flying colors, it's not just about me doing it. I, I want my wife to do it. I want her to pass through this life victoriously. I want my sons. I want Matthew and Tyler to pass through this life victoriously. I want my daughter-in-laws to pass through this life victoriously. Amen. But old buddy, I want Sam and Sadie and Pete, I want them to live in victory in Christ. Amen. I don't care if they don't have a... <laughs> starting to use a term my mama used to use, but they're not going to use that. <laughs> you know what I was getting ready to say here? <laughs> I'll blame it on my mama. <laughs> I don't care if they don't have a pot to pee in. As long as they know Jesus. As long as I can spend eternity with them in heaven. That's what matters. Amen. Stand with me. The door you come. Heads about and eyes closed. Kids about in high school.
How important is it, is it to you today to pass through this life with flying colors? How important is it, is it to you? Is it so important that you will refuse the things of this world? Is it so important that you will choose the right path? Is it so important for you to pass through this life with flying colors that you will take on the role of leadership? Husbands, will you take on the role of Christian leadership, be an influence and an impact in your family? Wives, moms, will you do that? Will you take on that role? Hey, young people that are getting ready to go out into the world for the first time as far as not being a high school student, not being a, a college student, you get ready to go out into this world for the first time, will you take on the responsibility to be an influence and an impact for Jesus Christ in this world? Will you do that? Moms and dads, is it, is it so important to you that your children pass through this life with flying colors that you are willing to stand against this world and stand against the wiles of the devil and do all you can to make sure that their soul is protected. The altar's open if you'd like to come and pray this morning. Maybe somebody here this morning is feeling the need and saying, man, I need God's help. I want, to be a, I want to be a witness for Him. I want to be an influence for Him. I want to lead my family in the right way. And I, I just need God's help. Would you come? Man, I look around this auditorium, this, this sanctuary this morning, and I, I see all these young people. Moms and dads, are you protecting their souls? Please make those choices today <laughs> to set the right path before them. With every head bowed, every eye closed, friend, let me ask you something this morning. Do you know that you're saved? Do you have a clear testimony this morning? Or is your testimony that, oh, I'm in church, I go to church, or I'm a good person? Is that your testimony? That's not a clear testimony. Has there been a time when you turned your life over to Jesus, the one who died for you and rose again? Have you turned your life over to him? If you don't have that clear testimony, and you know today that if you died, you'd go to hell, you'd be separated from God, and you're ready to make that decision for Christ, right where you stand, would you just slip your hand up, preacher, that's me. Young folks, God bless you. Thank you, I see that hand. Any others here this morning? Preacher, I know that's me. I need to be saved. I, if I died today, I don't know that I'd go to heaven, and I want the assurance of that. I, I want to trust Jesus today. Oh, you may be a mom or a grandparent in here, or a dad, a grandfather. Hey, if you need to be saved, would you just slip your hand up? I'm not going to embarrass you, but I do want to pray with you, pray for you. Would you slip your hand up? Preacher, I need to be saved. I'm ready to turn my life over to Christ. Any others this morning? I praise God we've had one young person today that said, you know what, I'm ready to turn my life over to Jesus. Anyone else? For that one that raised their hand, would you just simply call on the name of Jesus with me? You can pray this out loud. You can pray it silently in your heart. Say, Dear Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've sinned against you. And I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sins. Create within me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit in me. Help me to live for you. Help me to honor you. But thank you for saving me. If you prayed that prayer, would you just slip your hand back up and say, Preacher, I pray. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Father, we do thank you for this time to be in your house. Thank you for these, these students that are here. Just ask again, Father, for your blessings to be upon them. Lord, they're going out into a wicked world. And they need you. They may not know right now how much they need you, but they need you. So, Lord, I pray that you just continue to draw them, draw them up close to you. Father, I pray this morning for each one of us that passing through this life of flying colors be important to us. Because it's all about honoring you with our life. So, God, you help us. We'll give you the praise. Again, thank you for our military. Thank you for our veterans. Thank you for those who've laid down their life for this nation. We love you, Lord. We thank you for the one that laid down his life for us, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.